Hey everyone! <laughs> uh, thanks Dustin for introducing us. Uh, as Dustin mentioned, I'm Sierra. I'm the Managing Director of Behavior Change Design at MADPAL. And I'm Samantha, the Senior Behavior Change and Experience Designer. Uh, as Sierra mentioned, we both work on the Behavior Change team with Dustin. Uh, and on our team, we like to think about our skills in terms of superpowers. So my design superpower is narrative. <laughs> Mine's games. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about how games and narrative aren't just for kids, uh, how they foster something much deeper and much needed in all of us. Um, we will also share how we and other awesome designers can and do use games and narrative to foster human flourishing in behavior change. So before we really dive in, uh, we wanted to give you definitions that we work with uh, when we use narrative in games uh, to design for behavior change. Uh, so narrative to me is a tool, uh, and I define it as an account of connected events that together make a meaningful whole. This definition has two parts for me that I think are really important. The first is this word account, because that highlights the relationship between the storyteller and the active listener. The second is this idea that it's not simply a series of events that makes a narrative, but rather the connections that we draw between them. There are many definitions for games out there in the world. Uh, so for the purpose of this talk and a lot of the things we're going to be discussing, we'll look at games as a structured form of play, uh, which can sometimes have rules, interactions, and other good things. <laughs> uh, so first, uh, what do games and stories have in common? Uh, they both facilitate meaningful play. Meaningful play is an action that is both good for you and fun to do. As kids, we were always encouraged to play and to story. And by to story, I mean to make or consume stories in any form. In many cases, the lines between stories and games are blurred, like in playing pretend. We gamed and storied because it's healthy for development and fosters growth and imagination while helping us define who we are and our place in the world. As adults, however, we are no longer encouraged to take the time to play. And in fact, we move in systems that are designed in a way that doesn't leave room for playtime. There's a stigma around fun, stories, and games. But why is this? Have our basic needs changed since we were kids? The great thing about both games and stories is that they aren't real life. They are something better than real life, something that gets our brains sparking and our hearts pumping. That's because games and stories don't try to be mirrors of real life. That would be boring, because in most cases, reality is boring. Games and narratives are both a way to experience the real world as something a little better, to expand our ideas of what is possible for us right now. <laughs> 